Brown and Sharp Automatic Screw Machine Operator Training Program. Lesson number seven, basic setup. As an operator of the Brown and Sharp Automatic Screw Machine, you will be required to perform the tasks necessary for a basic machine setup. This television training tape will give you this information. The first step in the machine setup is to adjust the stock feed mechanism. The purpose of the stock feed mechanism is to feed the correct amount of stock into the machining area at exactly the right moment during the cycle. The amount of stock feed is set by turning the feed adjusting knob. For large changes in feed, make your adjustment before loading bar stock into the pusher. The feed scale will indicate the amount of stock that will be fed. Always set the feed to one quarter of an inch more stock than is needed for the part. The purpose of the additional one quarter of an inch is to allow room to set the cutoff tool and to ensure enough stock is fed out to reach the stock stop. This is a circular cutoff tool. The circular cutoff tool can form as well as cut off the finished part. This cutoff tool has a forming function. The circular cutoff tool is normally mounted on the rear cross slide using a circular tool post holder. This is a cutoff blade. The cutoff blade can be mounted to the cross slide or vertical slide using a tool holder designed for that purpose. The cutoff blade is used for separating the finished part if no forming is required during the cutoff operation. This is a circular tool holder with a mounted form tool. This tool mounting screw holds the form tool in the fixture. The tool mounting screw threads into the tool. This is the tool clamp bolt. The purpose of the tool clamp bolt is to secure the tool within the fixture. This is the T-bolt. The T portion of the bolt slides into the keyway on the cross slide. Tightening the bolt secures the fixture to the cross slide. The cutting edge of the tool must be on the center line of the bar stock to cut properly. On the double lot machine, the distance between the center line of the tool and the center of the bar stock will be one eighth of an inch when the tool is properly centered. On the number two machine, the distance will be one quarter of an inch. With tools that have a rake angle, the measurement is taken from the cutting edge of the tool. This is the centering screw. Turning this screw will cause the tool to be raised or lowered in the tool holder to bring the tool on center with the stock. The movement is caused by an eccentric screw and is limited. The tool must be close to center before this adjustment can be made. If one end of a part being machined is oversized and the other end is undersized, you will be adjusting these taper adjusting screws. By loosening one of these screws and tightening the other, a slight rotation of the tool will occur. With the stock feed already set, the cutoff blade can be mounted. Be sure the cross slide and tool holder are free of chips, dirt, or sludge. The T-bolt can be slid into the keyway on the cross slide first. The tool holder with the circular cutoff tool mounted can then be slid over the T-bolt. Slide the tool holder toward the spindle until you can measure approximately one eighth of an inch between the spindle face and the nearest edge of the cutoff tool. Lock down the tool holder securely. The circular cutoff tool can now be placed approximately on the center line of the spindle. Loosen the tool clamp bolt and the tool mounting screw. Place a lever in the cross slide operating mechanism and advance the cross slide by hand. Visually check the cutting edge of the tool against the center line of the spindle. Adjust the tool if necessary and retighten the clamp bolts. Feed out the bar of stock, then close the collet. Start the spindle and cut off the end of the bar by advancing the cutoff tool by hand. If the tool is below center, 
a tip will be left on the end of the bar. The words below center mean that the tool must be moved in the opposite direction of the bar's rotation to cause it to come to center. The direction of the spindle rotation and the cross slide that the tool is mounted on will change the direction that the tool must be moved to bring it to center. Always remember to move the tool into the direction of rotation of the bar stock as your final centering adjustment. Check the end of the bar to determine how the cutoff should be adjusted. If the tool is below center, a tip will be formed on the end of the bar. If the tool is above center, the part will be pushed off or broken off the end of the bar. With the tool on center, hand crank the machine to the low point of the cross slide cam. The tool should now be positioned about 1 64th of an inch from the edge of the bar stock. Turn the cross slide adjusting nut to make this adjustment. Hand crank the cross slide through the rest of the cycle to be sure the cutoff clears the bar before feed out occurs. You can now adjust the stock stop for the correct part length. Measure from the outside edge of the cutoff blade to the stock stop. Secure the stop in the turret once the correct length is measured. If a swing stop is called for in the setup, it should be adjusted in the same manner. The form tool and tool holder can now be mounted. A riser block is required on the front cross slide when the direction of the spindle rotation is as indicated here. The riser brings the cutting edge of the tool up so it can be placed on center. This tool holder has a riser block in place. Mount the form tool holder to the cross slide and center the tool using the same procedure shown for the cutoff tool. A line can now be scribed in the bar by advancing the cutoff tool into the bar by hand. The scribed line will enable you to set the horizontal position of the form tool on the cross slide. Lock down the tool holder securely. The depth of cut can now be set. Be sure the positive stop screw and the cross slide adjusting screw have been backed off before you begin. Hand crank the machine to the high point of the front cross slide cam. Start the spindle. Advance the tool into the work using the cross slide adjusting nut. Continue to advance the tool into the work until you cut a part which is three to five thousandths under the correct part size. Now turn the positive stop screw down until it contacts the machine. Increase the pressure on the positive stop screw slightly. Start the machine and cut another part under normal cutting conditions. Check the part size. Continue to increase the tension on the positive stop screw slightly until you cut a part to the correct size then lock down the stop securely. If you continue to have variations in part size as you run a job, you may need to increase positive stop tension slightly. Be careful, too much tension can cause unnecessary damage to your machine. As an operator of the Brown and Sharp screw machine, you must be able to identify the different types of drills used in the turret. This is a standard twist drill. This is the most common drill used on the screw machine and is often referred to as a screw machine drill. Because of the limited space between the turret and the work spindle, the standard twist drill used may be a stub drill. This is the same as a twist drill except the drill is shorter. The angle of the cutting edge of the standard twist drill is normally 59 degrees. The purpose of the standard twist drill is to drill medium to shallow holes. This is a stepped drill. It is used to drill two different diameters with one drilling operation. Notice that this drill has two different cutting edges for drilling different diameters. This is a center or spot drill. The only difference between this drill and a screw machine drill are the angles of the cutting edges. The spot drill is ground to a 45 degree angle. The sharper angle of the cutting edge allows the drill to start a hole without walking or run out. After the hole has been started by the spot drill, 
the screw machine drill is used to complete the hole. This is a combined drill and countersink. It may also be used for centering or starting a hole without walking or run out. This is an adjustable turret tool holder. This is the most common type of holder used on the brown and sharp screw machine. It can be used for holding spot drills, screw machine drills, reamers, and other end working tools. The shank of the holder must be selected to fit into the turret. The front of the holder is designed to hold the bushing, which is selected for the drill to be used. The front of the holder is held in place by two locking screws located on either side of the fixture. The bushing is split on the side so that it will compress over the tool being held. The bushing must be placed into the holder so that the flat on the bushing will seat against the clamp screw on the side of the fixture. The clamp screw will compress the bushing over the tool to hold it securely in place. You can now set the first drill or spot drill in place. To set the spot drill, stop the machine after the stock feed portion of the cycle. With the drill mounted in the turret, you can now start the spindle and move the drill toward the bar end with the turret hand lever. Position the drill near the center of the bar. Apply pressure to the drill by pulling on the turret lever. Now tighten the locking screws. The pressure applied by the cutting edges of the drill will center it in the bar stock. Once the locking screws are fully tightened, advance the drill into the bar to the required depth of the hole. Hand crank the machine to the high point of the spot drill lobe on the lead cam. Now advance the tool holder until the drill bottoms out in the hole, then lock down the tool holder securely. All other drills can be set using the same procedure. This completes your television training tape on basic setup of the Brown and Sharp automatic screw machine. You may watch this tape as many times as you need to fully understand the material. When you have finished, return to the operator booklet for your next step.